Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Welcome to our service at the Sharon Seventh-day Adventist Church in Baltimore City, Maryland, located at 5814 Harford Road. Whether you are tuning in from YouTube or Facebook, we welcome you this morning. Our senior pastor is Pastor Michael W. Dyson. And we are so excited to have you worship with us today. Now, we may be virtual this week, but we are still back and we're still strong in Christ. I would like for you to join me at home as we recite our affirmation of faith. Turn in your Bibles to John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not 
his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And turn to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's prayer time. The most recent statistics in the state of Maryland shows an infection rate for COVID. Nearly 30% of all those tested, that's a lot of people. But do you know, the great physician is still the one that we worship, the one we praise, and the one who is faithful. Please continue to take care of one another, check in on one another, pray one for another and one with another. I want to invite you to pray with me as we approach God's throne. Our Father in heaven, we, not just here at the Sharon Seventh-day Adventist Church, but we, globally, the family of God, we bow the knee before you and we ask. We ask for your mercy today, O oh Lord. We ask for your grace. And we ask that your healing hand would touch, touch the earth today. Heal this planet, heal this land. Father, for we have sinned. We've sinned against you. Corporately, individually, Father, we ask that you would forgive us for the many times that we come short of the glory that you would have. Father, whether we eat or drink or whatsoever we do, we want to give all and do all to the glory of God. Father, we have some sick and we have some shut-ins and we ask that you would be with those individuals today. Comfort them. Give them the assurance that they are not alone and that you are with them. Father, we have some bereaved, and we ask that you would be with those bereaved families that they might understand that not only are they not alone, that you are still the resurrection, the life and the truth. As we go throughout this service, and we go throughout this week. We thank you for your mercies, your kindness, and all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Father, help us to be brothers and sisters who stand by one another. Help us to be a family that unites one with another, and let the body of Christ be strong that the entire body of Christ would thrive. All these things we ask, and we give you the glory for it. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and all of God's people said, amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Luke 18 and verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, so shall he find faith on the earth. 
Every now and then we have a great thrill in our lives and one of those today for me is the opportunity to introduce our speaker today who is our first elder, Elder Calvin Brees. Elder Calvin Brees is uh, an amazing warrior for the Lord. I don't want to go into his whole life story, but he has been a strong, strong advocate for uh, mental health and mental hygiene, and he spent many, many years working with the prison ministry, and, and uh, the Lord, he has done every ministry that the Lord has commanded him to do. He is a man of God, a man of faith, and one that I am thrilled to introduce. The next voice you will hear after a selection from our musician, Richard Mosley, will be that of our own Elder Calvin Brees.
Amen. Thank you, for Brother Mosley, our musician, for that beautiful, beautiful song. For he is the only true and living God. I'm blessed to be with you all this beautiful Sabbath morning. And I am glad to be able to be a member in the household of faith. And I trust that we all are looking in hope, waiting patiently, but time passes on at the nearness of the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I want to welcome you into the presence of the Lord to hear his word on this beautiful Sabbath morning. To all who are in homes, over the seas, over the airs, wherever you may be, and you're under the sound of my voice and my presence, I wish you all a blessed and a happy Sabbath and a blessed and hopeful and eternal destiny in him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather together on this beautiful Sabbath morning, we want to give you the glory. We want to give you the praise, Lord, because there remaineth a rest for the people of God. And so we have entered into that rest, that rest of praise, worship, fellowship, rejoicing, celebration for the good things you have done, the things you are doing, and the great and eternal things which you are bringing, you will be bringing to pass. So Lord, as we gather together and as we uh, open your word and as we look at the good things that you've promised, we just say for our salvation and also the Lord for our destiny, we give you the glory, we give you the praise. We pray that you will lift us up. We pray that you will bless those who are burdened and bowed down. We pray for those who are in need of healing. We pray for those who are and destitute or hopeless and helpless, we pray through your grace and also, dear Lord, through our ministry, through our witnessing, that a greater revelation of you and your love for us will be shown and also your salvation. We give you the glory, we give you the praise, we give you the honor. Amen. This morning, the question was asked, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith in the earth? Turn to, if you are able to, Luke chapter 8, and I'm going to be very, reading from the first verse. Luke chapter 8, and I'll be reading from the first verse. And he, meaning Jesus, spake a parable unto them, as to this, to this end, the men ought to always to pray and not to faint, saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while but afterwards, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continually coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what that unjudged judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry upon him day and night? Though he be along with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith in the earth. When the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith in the earth. Now, I'm going to present this, this uh, statement to you. And... Uh, I think you would agree with me or it would give you some pause to think. Faith is a most com 
uh, precious commodity in these days. In the days in which we live, faith is fast disappearing. We have lost faith in much. We have lost faith in our institutions. We have lost faith in our government. We have lost, or losing faith anyway, we have lost faith in our abilities to provide for our economic welfare. We have lost faith in our health providers because we begin to question as they come out over and over again with some new modification which we have to use to control the virus. And we find that it's instead of being under control, it's increasingly being virulent. So we wonder, there was a uh, doctor who uh, worked in an institution and he was reported to say when it came out to him that he had to make some more adaptions, he said, no, he said, this is it. He said, I'm not gonna do any more mask. I mean, no, he said, I'm not gonna do any more taking uh, uh, vaccines. I'm not gonna do any more special precautions other than the ones that are already in place because every time I turn around, there's something new. And this is a medical doctor speaking who is in care for the sick. So we find then that there is loss of faith in our scientific, in our educational systems, and we find loss of faith in our families, in, uh, fa uh, uh, in, in, many, um, in many, many areas and facets of life. And we know this. We know from the, what the Lord told us uh, in Matthew 24. He said that prior to his coming, there would be wars, rumors of wars, pestilences, earthquakes, men's heart failing them for fear for those things that are coming upon the earth, which means that faith is failing. And so that's why Jesus made the statement. He said, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith in the earth. Now, the uh, lady that he used in the parable was uh, starving, and she wanted, she wanted the uh, judge to uh, hear her cause. And the judge, he did not fear God nor man, but because the lady was persistent, he said, well, because she worries me so, I'm going to give her her request. And Jesus said, hear what the unjust judge says. But then he says, God, shall not God avenge his own speedily? He says, yes, God will avenge us. But he said, nevertheless, will there, for people, will there be anyone in the earth who have faith in him? And so this is the question which uh, is posed. And we know, brothers and sisters, that the word it says, he says, men ought to pray and to not faint. So as we look into our world today and the situation that we're in, and he said, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith in the earth? Well, my question is to us is, when he comes, will he have faith in us? Will we be faithful? Will we have faith in Christ? The scripture says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. But we find that as we are nearing, nearing to the coming of the Lord and to and his coming and, his, uh, uh, and the climax of history, we find that more and more people are losing faith. They, even, um, even, even among the Christian community, people are losing faith. And that's why Jesus says, even among us will he find faith in the earth. Well, I maintain that he will find faith in the earth, but my question that I'm going to make it personal is, is he going to find faith in you? And he's, is he going to find faith in me? That's the question to which we have to <clears throat> answer for ourselves to the Lord. Because if we do not find, if he, if he does not find faith in us, that just means that we are lost. We have not found eternal life. We have not found salvation 
and we have not maintained our connection with Christ through faith. So I just want to let us know, I'm not concerned, or no, I wouldn't say I'm not concerned. My focus here is not on the world. My focus here is on us, the people of God, the people of God who he has committed to him, to us, the gospel, not only to live, not only to give the gospel, but to live this gospel. See, before you, you cannot give what you do not have. You cannot give what you do not live. So my concern for us today, as we enter into these end times, is that are we, are we living our faith? Because before we can share our faith, our faith must be shown in us. Our faith must be in us internally so that we can share that faith. And so in the interest of sharing that faith, because we know that as the Lord cometh, as, as is drawing near, we find, an, 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 we find a, an amazing occurrence. The Lord told us he gave us the prophecies in his word. He gave us his uh, prophetic in the spirit of prophecy and the gifts to the church. He gave us the knowledge. He gave us warnings. He gave us ins um, uh, instructions on the conditions of the world in which would be before he came. He said, as in the days of Noah, what were they doing in the days of Noah? In the days of Noah, there was, they were living, they were uh, 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 going about their own ways, uh, they were uh, focusing on their own uh, uh, enjoyment, they were focusing on their own uh, interests, and they were also exceedingly wicked. And so there was no desire for spiritual, there was no desire for... Uh, 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 righteousness. As the Lord said, he says that before the flood, he says he looked down on the children of men and found out that they had all gone astray, that the wickedness of men was exceedingly great. But it says that nor found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And when I think about grace, I think all the things that are incorporated into grace, and one of them is faith. Because when we have grace, we accept for we are saved by, as we read every Sabbath morning, therefore by grace are you saved through faith. So Abraham, for, so Noah, he had faith and he, and he had found grace. And so Noah preached 120 years to a world that was bent on this destruction. And the Lord said, as it was in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. In other words, not to say that eating and drinking is not, is not needful, is not something to be done, but eating and drinking as the priority rather than as the uh, blessing from God, we then we find that it begins to become uh, idle. It begins to, to cause us to lose our faith to go our way and to be steeped more and more into sin. And this is what happened with the days of Noah. And the Lord said, before he comes, it would be like that. He said, and Noah preached 120 years. Out of the 120 years, only eight souls were saved. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith in the earth? Will he find faith in us? Well, I will fast forward and say to you, yes, he is going to find faith because there is a statement. There is a promise. There is a, there is a promise that the Lord said in Revelation. He said, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments and have the faith of Jesus. So there will be faith in the earth, but it will be in God's people. It will be the remnant people who have accepted him 
who have called, who have called, who he has called out, and who has spreading the gospel, the everlasting gospel to preach to those that dwell on the earth. So there will be a faithful few that will be the remnant, and that remnant will be the ones that Christ is coming for. Nevertheless, he's given us, his people, the mandate and the instruction and commandment to go out and witness the gospel because the hour of his judgment has come. And it says that judgment must begin at the house of God. So if judgment begins at the house of God, it begins with us. So we are now in that phase in which God is expecting us, God is judging us, and God is depending upon us to give this gospel, to live this gospel to the world. As Paul said, he says that he, that, uh, he was given the instruction to make all men see and to do, present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And this is what we're called to do. But first, we ourselves must be committed. We ourselves must be submitted to the will and the work of God through his spirit. And my challenge and my question to you today and to me is that there will be faith in the earth. But my question is that it be in us. So I'm going to make some recommendations, brothers and sisters, that we must contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints, as the brother James says in, the, in his epistle. He said that we must not be wavering. We must ask in faith, believing we shall receive. But the point is, is first we must ask God to to give us repentance. We must submit. We must present our whole selves to God. In other words, in order to be used, in order to be a messenger of God, you have to be part of the message. The message has to be in us so that we can spread it out. We must be, be, we must be conformed to Christ before we can inform others of Christ. And so that is something which we have to do, and these are, this is something which I would, and these are some suggestions that I would have for us to look at. And one of the, first of all, I would say that we must pray for the complete submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. This we must do. We must pray for the indwelling guidance of the Holy Spirit. We must put on the whole armor of God, as it is said uh, uh, in Romans 6 to 12. And then we must allow the Holy Spirit to be dwelling us and that Christ will be in us so that we may go out and present this last message of salvation so as we see the world coming to an end, as we see the signs of Jesus' coming, as we see the um, uh, challenges that the people of God face, we are not to be disheartened. We are not to be discouraged. We are not to sur uh, uh, surround the wagons and, and, and hide out. We are not to be uh, intimidated. We are to go forward. When the children of Israel were to be delivered, the Lord said to Moses, why cry unto me? Go forward. And the apostle Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind and looking for those things which are future, I press to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So what we have to do we have to first submit and commit ourselves to Christ. Then we will be empowered by his spirit and his word and in communication with him to go out and witness because we witness out 
what we have witnessed within. As John says, we have this witness within ourselves. And when we have this witness within ourselves, we will have no problem in witnessing to others. And people said, I mean, in Je- I'm sorry, and Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So what we do, we will lift up Christ as we face the challenges of these last days. And I want to turn to Philippians, I'm sorry, Colossians, and I'm going to look at, I'm going I'm to read this verse. And this was the Paul, and this is what the apostle says in Colossians 1, 24. I mean, I'm sorry, in Colossians uh, 1, um, Colossians 1, 23. He said, if you continue in the faith, this is what he says, and this is what we're talking about, faith. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. For the, even the mystery which has been hid from ages, from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto our labor also striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. And this is what God expects of all of us. But he says, but Paul made a statement also in how this comes about. So I'm looking at Philippians, and I'm turning to Philippians 3. And he says, finally, my brethren, to write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you to say, He says, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the circumcision. For we are the circumcision, we worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised eighth day of the stock of Israel, tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of the Hebrews, of Pharisees, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching their righteousness, which is, in the, which, is in the, which is in the Lord, blameless. But he said this, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I might win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, and here's the one thing which we all must do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many be bus- as many be perfect be thus minded. And if there's anything that you be otherwise minded, God will reveal this to you. So he says, For our conversation is in heaven, 
from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the work and whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. And he's talking about God coming into us to change us into his likeness, into his image, and that we might uh, experience what John says, for now are we the sons of God, and it does not appear what we shall be. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So, the, so my instruction, I mean, my admonition to me and to us is that we contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints and that through faith in Christ that we will be able to be at the witnesses as well as victors and as heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ as we enter into eternal life that is soon coming. But when he comes, let us be sure that he will find faith in us. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your call, and we thank you for our salvation through faith. So, Lord, bless us. We ask you to help us to surrender all to you so that you can use us mightily to spread your word, to uh, present the end, end time gospel, and to be ready for your soon coming when you will take us out of time into the eternity so that we should ever be with the Lord. Bless us as we continue to worship on this blessed Sabbath day. We pray for those who are in the valley of decision. We pray for those who hear the word. We pray for healing. We pray also, the Lord, for hope. And we pray for faith. For in our faith and in our patience, we possess our souls in you. We give you the glory, we give you the praise, and we give you honor. Amen. Have a blessed Sabbath.